Hi, everybody. Welcome to the World's First Showcase. I'm one of the co-hosts, Bogdan Tosetsky. And my name is Amiri Saleh. And Words, we're here with Words First, representing BBC Radio One Extra, BBC Asian Network and BBC Contains Strong Language Festival. That's right. And the project has been brought to you by Apples and Snakes, Young Identity and New Riki. This is a, a search for the spoken word stars of the future, some of the best young talent in the country, really excited um, to share their work with you. They're, they're incredible. And uh, they, they've uh, been working on both writing and performing and also playing around with this new medium that we've all been working with, uh, which is the webcam um, and uh, trying to get creative with the video format. And we've been having a look at the poems and they're incredible and I'm so, so excited. So Bogdan, who is the first poet? So rivers uh, have been important to poets for, for centuries and uh, the next poet, Aman, adds to this tradition with his new piece. So check it out. A wide-eyed child, about yay high, in his mud-infused cardigan and forest green eyes, with a fixed look of marvel and love for the way the world around could enlighten, enchant, and mesmerize. Year three, world history. Who here knows the name of the longest and most famous river in India? Her voice echoed across the classroom. Something warm in my insides flitted and pranced. It rose and came to rest between my shoulder blades. Lovers reunited for one final dance. What followed was a fleeting moment, a blink in time, the kind that would fizzle and pass you by. If you didn't sense the weight of my India's delta plains and millennia of farmers with no tears left to cry. I know, Miss Birch, pick me. India's most famous river is called the Ganga. Fresh from an evening of battling with my shower hair, with generous helpings of her like clockwork sigh, mother would beckon me over from her spot on the sofa, scoop me up in her weary arms and cradle me high. Her words, oh, how they fell, delicately poised, quivering yet strong, fragrant and true, like cardamom seeds on the tops of her tea. Stories descended, first father, then daughter, now son, and you. But ma, it's just a river. She smiled, that kind of smile where one knew, in the winding canyons that hollowed the wrinkles of her cheek, in her parched skin, barren plains with eons of half fulfilled dreams, her eyes dancing with Rajasthan's rains and Kashmir's Kushbu. Ganga nourished and nurtured our Mother Earth, replenishing her vessel, sating her thirst. To bathe in the river's life-giving and pure is to surrender one's soul in God and endure. I'm afraid you're incorrect. It's pronounced the Ganges. Oh, Ganga, redeemer of the fallen, mother of my salvation, help me unravel this conflicted heritage of mine. Through the winding Sindhu Valley, you may trace my lineage, my blood coursing through these banks, tails through the grapevine. Oh, Ganga, grant me liberation, bless my broken British tongue and ail my impurities. Through your ebbs and flows, channel strength of mind, so I may wear upon my armour my motherland's true qualities. The word is Ganga, my friend. For no child is too dirty to be embraced by his mother. No child too spirited to be without his wa your watchful gaze. The word is Ganga, my friend. But that's okay. I'll allow you to rephrase. Now come with me on the journey, because next up we're going up north, it's Lori. I lose my job, then rain an entire sky. I don't cry usually, it's just the universe is fobbing me off. In January, I put hope in a jar, asked for more. This year is a hammer hurtling into glass. You lose your job too. Each morning a can open a twist. We say, this one, this one. Try not to cut our fingers on the vacancy posts. You confess in your phone interview that funeral assistant isn't for you. We've all felt death sentence this year. It stopped taking its shoes off at the door. Every night, you blow up a thousand tiny balloons. I soothe the tangled strings of your forehead to let the balloons rise. There are enough to fill an entire sky. My fingertips reach the summit of your head, creep through the forest of your hair. 
Where do you grow your dreams? Sometimes it seems that I'm their keeper, holding you while you sleep. I practice every night. I want to carry my childhood on my back, but know when to put her down. I want to lift all my friends with the strength of my pinky finger. I don't want hope to be dead. Say she's just asleep, she's dreaming. I want to be the voice after the long walk that tells you to rest. I want to taste salt on my lips and dark berries on my tongue. I want to find you in a hurricane and anchor you to the floor. I want to kick worry off a cliff like Lucy Lou style, watch her fall. I want to marvel at how amazing a plum feels in my hands. I don't want to be running, running, running. I want a silence as soft as bright cotton sheets. I want you to pinch me hard. We're still alive. I don't want another death toll. I want more time. I will hold hope like a baby bird, ugly vulnerable, fragile bones with the promise of an entire sky. Right, you might be intrigued by the shadowy presence delivering the next poem, but I'm going to spoil it for everybody and tell you right now that the author is none other than Cassie. Enjoy. Passivity is complicity, and for that you should feel guilty. I'm not expecting for change to happen suddenly and that we all start getting treated equally. But I want people to acknowledge the difficulty of feeling fully part of a community when you're not often recognised as a party. I find it unthinkable in these times still being seen as despicable. It's irrational. People living in their bubble, reaching the point of getting physical, wanting us to go back to the jungle. So many witness atrocities, unfairly committed by the authorities. Even when we say we cannot breathe, they do not remove their knees. Rarely highlighted in the press for our success. Way too many pages related to our death and I am tired. They show our faces and pour down the voices. Break us into pieces and erase the traces. But we can make choices. We have to make noises. Educate youngsters not to become monsters. We'll teach them together that Black Lives Matter. And to all still spreading this all live matter, it's not true until black lives matter too. And yeah, your voice matter, but today is not about you. Your next performer this evening is Diamond. Give it up for Diamond. Met the new toilet attendant working in GOY, who valiantly succeeded in making my GF cry. She was certainly a character, a cruel mistress, character being the obvious abbreviation for Jehovah's Witness. Now, it was a unisex toilet, and it's the first time I've heard someone answer the question, can I leave the seat up with, what would Jesus do? It's also the first time I've seen someone perform an exorcism, it's one block a loo. We entered the cubicle like lambs to the slaughter while she scowled and sprayed us with holy water. This is a far-fetched tale. I didn't expect you to believe this. I said I was running out of patience and she promptly responded, well, so is Jesus. I'm not proud of what I did next, but there's only one man that can judge me and he was holding her down when I flushed the lavatory. The whole experience left me vacant and scarred. My girlfriend and I were hastily barred. She took me to my favorite place to distract me. She took me to my favorite place, ice cream factory. Not even ice cream could help to lift my mood. Just gave a new meaning to the phrase demonizing food. Sauce I used tasted like the devil's semen. Rainbow sprinkles were the tears of tiny gay demons. The next day I walked around in a vacant void, went to the job center because I'm currently unemployed. Careers advisor looked through my CV and asked why I have so many gaps. Um, suffering from a two year mental health crisis perhaps. She asked me if my unemployment had any defining factors. I said, I'm not unemployed, I'm an actor. 
She said, acting, that's great. Have you been in anything recently? And I said, yes, of course. Debt. Next up, we're going to hear from Joe with an interesting persona piece and a real commitment to inhabiting the character. You, you see what I mean. Enjoy. I am the gravedigger of Lesbos. I recite the funeral prayer. O oh God, forgive the living and the dead, those who are present among us and those who are absent. I did the adults first, worked myself up to it. Then I washed a child's body and I wanted to come home. Washed up on the golden shore like rubbish cast away. A tiny ball of life extinguished as darkness falls on day. His body no bigger than a doll. Eyes staring wide open straight into my soul. Blue lips, pale skin, sodden jumper hanging from body shrunken thin. Ten bodies on this tide, we carry each to the truck, drive up the track to the field. Here, death is a smell. Dig a row of graves in the stubborn red soil. It's like a holiday resort from hell. I'm drawn to the boy. He brims with life unlived. I close his eyes, mouth, wash his body, first right side, then left. Clip his nails, comb his hair, wrap him in a white cloth. Go directly to Yana, inshallah, too young for sin, too precious for this world. And take me home, home to Huddersfield, where I was born and bred, raised on granddad's stories of coming to England in 1961 in the snow, which he hadn't even seen before. Invited in by the locals, offered a brew, he always said that welcome was what made leaving home bearable. I came to Greece to pass that welcome on, and now I'm the gravedigger of Lesbos. I am a witness of what you, the civilised, refuse to see. Now you must end this crime committed in your name and mine, or come here to bury this boy with me. Give him the dignity in death that you and I, all Europe, refuse to give him in life. O oh God, forgive the living and the dead, those who are present among us and those who are absent. The lucky ones stumble ashore to outrun guards and dogs and raise a wire in their journey on, shocked to cling to life as if by a thread. I stay on the beach, my concern is with the dead. We're going to keep it going. Next up it's Nyla, who I completely agree with. There's not enough Rihanna albums in the world. Nyla's up next. Where there is gravel, there is body waiting to be unearthed. Flowers to be planted in dental cavities. There are cabbage patch kids of different sizes, the sprouting of watermelon in winter and threads come loose with good intention. Where there is reminder, there is therapy in non-surgical treatments. There is callous nature masquerading as a violin. There are too many clay pigeons shot down. Not enough Rihanna albums in the world. And blistered toes rubbed against mahogany. Where there is anger, there is torrential rainfall in Venice, the overflowing of waste baskets, children with pink eyed to do outside of the margins, a constant hunger that cannot be tamed, a lion's mouth frozen open in the Serengeti. Where there is acceptance, there are melted spoons and puddles, there are neon lights that never turned on, <sighs> screaming women turned into foxes, a genuine mistrust of MSG and talent shows I play when half asleep. Where there is grief, there are overheated walls of second chances. There are cashews for heartache and almonds for the brain. A constant rediscovery of where the wild things remain. Watermarks on selfies. Too many ways to sound foreign in English. Not enough boxes to state that you aren't. And where there is security.
There is the bottom of a pint glass. A connection between will and fist. The empty feeling of coming home to yourself. And in the end, a beginning. Thank you. This next poem touches on a topic that's particularly close to my own heart, uh, living in between languages, the mother tongues, new tongues and their interrelationships. So enjoy this uh, coming piece by Lara. Ahti, sister, you spoke my mother's tongue and those transpennine seats transported me to blushing Kasbah walls. That warmth Lips that hold each word, baked in clay of arid earth. Ochti, I was bound to you, woven in geometric tapestry. But I missed it. How could I not see a metronome of trains unyielding symphony? And you're there, breathless, behind the beat. Ochti, I failed you. You speak my mother's tongue, and my tongue is twisted, tied up in knots and useless phrases. And you're just lying there, oh, the eyes cast high, tin roof, fluorescent lights. And your grandson, what about him, stranded there? Your kin, he ricochets, rages against the sway of a train that's set to have its way. Nurses flock, they flood in before I know how. I am stood there, basking in shame, wishing that I just paid more attention in Sunday school. This is not enough, I can plainly see. So I call my mum, she intervenes. And I fix on you, oh tea. Are you who you claim to be? Or are you a test sent solely to torment me? A poltergeist, Scottish John, whispers from Arabic level one, and I get it, John. You lived in Oman. You dance through tongues better than I ever have or can. And you do it all so convincingly. It's not ukti, it's ukti. Your grandson hands me back the phone. You're seeking asylum. You're alone. Anxiety for you from your seat. You'd later say, we Muslims, we just want our family. Ukhti, madra, ma'andish, aikalimad. Sister, I'm sorry. I don't. We're now talking about self and future and the mind, the most powerful place. Next up is Mabinti. Welcome to the strength test. Now in order to pass, you cannot get any questions wrong. You have to prove that you can remain calm, level-headed and most importantly strong, despite what may come at you. Before any major sports league, there's preseason, and this is the place to train and condition the inner you to lift a few more mental weights, beating your personal best in the temptation meter race. Why? Because your biggest enemy is you. We're more afraid of the future than maybe a spider because the future we can't see. And you may say, my vision only extends an arm length in front of me. I know what I want, but my dreams are still cloudy. But if you digest everything society feeds you, you may find things in your mind become a little bit rowdy. Now, muscle in the body is soft tissue, but it's synonymous with strength. Even the strongest of metals in this world with enough pressure can be bent. The Bible even says, let the weak say, I am strong. So I ask, is it simply in your head? I believe that is faith, but one has to put this theory to the test. And with every level you reach, I must be honest, the test becomes harder. Help is at hand, but even that can be palaver. Strength is dangerous when it's too early for the saga. What comes around goes back around, a blessing and a disaster. So tell me, 
If I swing a bat so hard it hits my own face, is that karma? If I'm told to clean up my act and make a mess and see how close I could have come to success, is that karma? So what would you rather? Constant battles in your head but an established life that many would dream of? Or peace of mind? No stress but no assets to speak of? Again, this is the strength test. Where the economy is so tight that you cannot afford to flop but it's a catch-22 because if you trip up you cannot stop. If you get distracted along the way and act in a way that proves you weak, you must decide whether you'll continue along the path of strength or just cross the street. And even I sometimes take walks just to clear my head. Walking through the woods, but I'm not Little Red. There's no riding hood, this is not the book. Life is not a fairy tale. Mandem are actually riding through the hood. And what if I told you that the big bad wolf didn't exist, but rather was just a materialization of Little Red's fear? Do you catch my drift? This test is easy enough to pass if you just stop and think. This poem is called My Mother is Crying. My son is crying. So she's tower, I ask, and he says, my socks are ignoring my feet. Ale jak to, I ask him, and he can't explain. Nie martw się, na pewno się pogodzą, I say, but I know I'm out of my depth. So, chodź, synku, przytulimy się. We do, and his nose is a wet mouse trying to hide behind my clavicle. Nie martw się, synku, I tell him. Sam mam dni, kiedy uwiera mnie cały świat i nie wiem, jak prosić, żeby ktoś go wygładził. My mother is crying. What's the damage? Yishtu khamstashir elf ba'd bukra. I stumble over tea-stained, nimbly opened letters. Fifteen. That's in two days. Babi' al-hizam haq akhuk. The letters have tear stains. She looks at me for answers. We'll fix this. The call to prayer is echoing through both our mobile phones. Inshallah. She mumbles as she puts her headscarf on to pray. And now my daughter is crying in front of a screen. She is worried that Merida will never get her mum back. It's the first time she's cried because someone she does not know is in distress. And I, I have not cried at a film in years, but I breathe in the story and make my lungs large enough for her to curl up and nie martw się. I tell her, na pewno wszystko się dobrze skończy. I promise, już zresztą wstaje słońce. Inaczej, co by to była za historia? Prędzej czy później zaczną żyć długo i szczęśliwie. Zobaczysz, and will they really, she wants to know, will they actually, daddy? And I say, popatrz, 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 Już zmieniła się z powrotem, and now she's laughing because she thinks I was right. She's forgotten, she's gone. She just left me struggling in the doorway with inflatable, life rough lungs. And now my niece is crying. I can't say that, Amira. It's easy, Ani, Hilwa. I'm Googling how the Arabic language breaks syllables. It hurts my throat. I laugh. Slow it down, Baba. Say Ani. She says Ani, Hil, Hil, Wa. Wa. Now say it all together. Ani Hilwa. I don't want to do this anymore. She picks up her iPad and starts playing the Arabic alphabet song. I laugh. Okay, okay. How beautiful are you one to ten? Ten. She doesn't sound convinced. I am convinced if she learns to say I am beautiful in Arabic, eventually she will believe it. Yeah, my son is crying. He asks if he's going to die. He says, am I going to die? Am I going to die, daddy? I don't want to die. Am I going to die? And I don't want to lie to him. So I say, tak, synku, ale jeszcze bardzo, bardzo długo. And he wants me to kiss death away like a scraped knee. He holds me as tight as he can and doesn't understand why it's not helping. Synku, I want to shout. Kiedy byłem mały, chodziłem na roraty. Co rano, ze świeczką odwiniętą w papier i w kościele świętego Michała tłumaczyli mi dobitnie, że historie takie jak moja i twoja zawsze kończą się szczęśliwie, więc teraz nerwowo wertuję nasze życia i zaginam rogi na kartkach, sklejam co lepsze fragmenty w coś na kształt odpowiedzi. Now my brother is crying. Malak. Alhamdulillah. He's holding the corpse of his son. Inna lillahu inna lay raja'un. I have only ever seen Arab men cry at funerals. He places Ibrahim down, starts rolling a cigarette and mumbles, Alhamdulillah ala kulla hal. Rabbi yigib lana ish ma yishti. Ya Rabb arham ibni. Khalili yishfa'li. Yishuf Abdul Rabb wa Muhammad yishuf kiddati. At least he'll be with his cousins and grandma. Alhamdulillah. 
cigarette to mouth. And my daughter is crying. I spoke without looking up. She was closer than I thought, and my slammed door voice sent her running in fear back to me. And she hugs my leg. Imagine, it's like asking the big bad wolf to hide you from itself. And I stroke her hair. I think of Warsaw and how it's taken to dressing in black and red. From a safe distance, I watch my city clench its streets and wave that crowded fist at people it does not know. And I blink quickly, but it's not my turn. And you console children by distracting them. So, opowiedz mi bajkę, I tell her. I don't know any, she says. Wymysz coś. She smiles a wet smile and begins. Dawno, dawno temu byłam sobie ja. My sister is crying. She is holding her sixth child whilst praying to God that he lets her keep this one. That's not how it works, Naval, I laugh. Sekta bas, khalili hali. She has started to pray more recently. Every time a doctor sighs, I hear her say, Ya Rab, khalili ibni. And with a beautiful explanation of pain, next up, it's Matt. Pain sloshed around the universe, looking for a place to call home. The red planet, the grey, had no fleshy forms to seize. Pain collected in barbed clouds above the blue planet and plotted to pervade a minority of vessels. It picked out some special individuals. I don't know how it made its choice. Pain descended slow and certain, enfolding me in its serrated mist. It coiled round my belongings, stuck to me like sin, poised on the water supply and crept in, thorns taking root. Pain scraped away at what had filled me before, sinew, bone, hoax. Sinew was stitched with swollen nerves, a coat for my shame. Bones were stacked on my shoulders to build a seat for my fears. My hopes were incarcerated in the acidic pit of my stomach. They were dissolved, turned inside out, became past. I lived backwards, the quickest way to nothing. Became a premature babe as my mother was ripped from the other end of life with a force so fierce I was stranded. I was so filled up with emptiness I floated to the ceiling, projected an inverse image of myself for all to see. He's the life of the party, they said, played and pummeled me like a turgid balloon that must go flat. Lost interest when my flashy shirt lay lifeless on the floor. I thought they would notice if I sang my suffering. My muscles were guitar strings tuned to play the song of pain which broke windows, lodged glass in each orifice. To replace these daily lacerations, I exercised the pain with spirits, flushed them through my body, chanting, the pain is not me, the pain is not me, was so bound up with the pain those decanted demons could not distinguish their attack. One day, I took a pen and drew targets where pain hid. I soon became a mass of scribbles to present to the art-loving public. Right, next up, we have a poem in the grand and important spoken word tradition of ranting from Cleo. Brace yourselves and enjoy. This is a rant at anxiety because here we go again with that perspective shifter, mood swinger, past dweller, future fearer, big time drug dealer, lip shredder, little fucking shit. Unkind, blank mind, epidemic, awkward, can't talk, red face, repulsive, slow, no show, can't cope, lost hope, low. Everybody knows. 
tired, you're fired, unkempt, sectioned, reflection changer, body dysmorphia maker, hand quaker, isolator, procrastinator, cabin fever diva, under eye bag maker, obsessed, stressed, needles in the chest, dread, better off dead, grey, afraid, unexplained aches and pains, losing the plot, not funny, grubby, ugly, spends all your money, makes heart hurry, buys a McDonald's McFlurry when you're not supposed to have dairy and <laughs> it's not funny, unmoving, boozing, body abusing, doesn't eat, doesn't sleep for a week, freak, honey for knees, thinks people are saying things, you're disgusting, disengaged, you're a little bit strange, it's all, it's all in your head. Yes, they're just thoughts, but thoughts give you feelings which make you feel very real things and you really wish you were dreaming. Loud sounds, down, dry mouth, shortness of breath, sweat, personality vampire, work shirker, liar, no desire, mortal murderer, junk food gorger, criticiser, chills, <laughs> even more pills... Unpaid bills, gummy bears for breakfast, trips to the dentist, labelled, disabled, confidence killer, confidence killer, confidence killer. Feels like, feels like, delayed speech, comfort leech, shakes, mistakes, hanging by a thread, the end, rapid weight loss instigator, sadness maker, watering eye duct lover, nail nibbler, dribbler, opinion thief, unable to leave the house, <laughs> bed bound, <laughs> ambivalence queen, really, really mean, life sabotager, self-involved, prick makes you feel thick sick actual vomit it stings you become the devil's plaything it's emotional uncontrollable scarily untreatable joint acre self-hater jaw clencher jog on mate but i'm sure i'll see you later from my digital world to another digital world enjoy the words of yosa Flightless birds taste so much sweeter. Less collarbone, chest, more breast, more back, less spine. Hidden to imitate sin, you can barely taste haram. When flightless birds lay lifeless and deader than dodos. White rhinestones, interior decor their lungs. Squawking less than a minor note. Useless if not for consumption, begging for approval of tenderness. Tangling between teeth. Cuddling canines, crest, lounging on tongues, licking limericks on buds. Hoping to be savoured, less wavered at your mercy. Pleading, please don't you forget about me. Okay, item 1467893. Flightless birds taste so much sweeter by the masses. Massed in unison, countless catfish. They look just like their mothers, harmless. All proteins, all amino acids. All building bricks to form your mask, you line them with the ring of sage, salt, amulet, almost pathetic, all tones of ratchet, slice the wing. The flightless bird takes up too much space to witness such useless things in irony, missing more than what they fail to magnet themselves to, the heavens, unholy things. They ride in ransom jealousy, wanting wants of skies and tall trees, Terrible dreams of tiptoeing mountains instead of mouths. Miracles instead of houses aroused by crowdedness. Report to me when found more than just broken wings. Conspiring against the body, not face. A hearse with a casket of baggy clothes and fabricated fables. A broken arm you could say you fell, but a blackened eye, a bigger tell. But those are unimportant things. Flightless birds don't get black eyes, they get beaks that swell with blood that bursts and ruptures rings around them like seashells echoing their return to sea. Now I could talk about clammy things like sweaty palms and pearly teeth that T-Rexes hid behind their beaks back when pre-egg before turn of cheek, not quite such feathery things. The flightless bird rests on our shoulder blades. A scar of the wings, a zizel lost in vain's sake. 
dish dinner for dining demons, devising our defeat, but deciding not me, for that is a harmful thing. Have thoughts of me as more albatross, more cloaked raven perched on peach tree, more cackling goose native to Albuquerque, less head in sand, less ostracized. Okay, next up, we're going to hear an intricately constructed and rhymed piece with great use both of perfect and slant rhymes by Jardel. Here it comes. Make it a darling like your precious eye. Make me a garden, make fours into fives And when I'm not breathing, make sure I'm alive I'm sure I'm alive From Go-Go Power Rangers, I've been Go Gamora and Sodom Troll With a little pink pill that said P1 all proper no Beauty at its ugliest, gorgeous as a golem doll Humble as a hominid, porcelain, pauper king I can't live inside of my skull, too small a thing My head is disconnected, I left it on the ground My mother built a doll's house, my daddy burnt it down I know seven sisters where there's often thrice nines Where beauty killed the Kong, where you were silver tongued Lost in paradise as I write Milton's wrong We should burn a bridge, we should build a bond But we are not in Kansas, not in Kansas anymore we are rotting stanzas, dodging panzers in the war We are bandaged and unborn And on Saturdays at morning we'll piss in the River Jordan That's what sacrilege is for Or we could go to heaven, where McDonald's is Michelin Punch the pallbearers when they ask me where I pillage from And who I pay my pittance to Signatures, I'm sick of you Christmas is, I'm smitten Scrooge Ebenezer ebbing on my Christmas tree Teenage insect in the interview Paint you as I, pour my name Paint you as a pour my name Followers, they fall away Lingering, lingering, lingering lingering lipstick lingerie we are cryptids we are cryptic give a quick quip as we fornicate you compare me to an orphanage as i compare thee to an awful day and next up enjoy the beautiful sounds of frankie deep in the home man peels wet Towel from back, soiled bandage, an old wound. He stands, now is now, until it, 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 until it. Isn't this a boy in summer? Late 70s, NYC, pioneer of new disease, steam coming up and off like a smile. Hazard pulls on the lino in his going. He forgets. Blood real dangers of sex, sex, sex. Deep in the home, a woman still hot with life finds herself out. Stretched, skin like horizon, body pocketing, sun, 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 spots. Spots, dark, dark, spots, swallowed, light bleed surface from her. Isn't this girlish reverse the bedrock? No. Staining, decade, decade, decade. In the ballroom, needle wants warming frictions. Them, then, them, working into heartaches, heartaches. My loving year meant only, only. Mapping out the angles of sound, sound breaking each other down, down static music. But what happens when the wax is worn flat? The wax is worn flat and with the odd fit of texture, the needle swings to its crackling end. And here I am sat, brick backed against this. Home for the going, staring up and out at a sky sick with self. Cosmic spittle of star, 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 plus the absorbent nothing behind it. The scene of the caretaker. I have been so many people to so many people. And sometimes I want to believe them so much that I do. And what more could they need? The room going slow. Orphan nostalgia leaking out and over the audible night, plus the odd dance with drunken Lazarus, who loses a few more inches with each passing event. Every day, 
I watch them go. Some day, some day, soon, they will all be completely gone. Lost to loss. And this dribbling, forgetful cosmos. Switching its little lights on and off. On and... So this next poem really makes you ask yourself the question about what's in the frame, both in terms of how it's written and how it's been shot. Enjoy this piece by Nasima. There are holes in the stories your father tells you. Gaping. Tragedies fall through them. Charcoal and churning like child's play. Glazing over in the fine woodwork of your tabletop. Sweeped under the very Persian rug you keep above the smolder. Placated on coastline. Away from seawater. Away from homeland. There's no carpet burn here. Slouching. Behind the Venetian lace, guarding your light, covering your blind spots. Windows locked, it limits the oxygen, but your house is made a fire. My house is made a fire, stewing, spilling, hot pot, brewing, Tiffin, tired of trips, suppressing the body it is made to nourish. Howling on half moon to mark the month, beginnings of the lunar cycles, calendared August to August to August, ten or so days earlier each year. Weathered hands, no scorching sun like monsoon rain. Know how to work through week without complaint. Road maps wallowing in the pits of palms. Jovial moments cupped in the fold of knuckles. Dorsal side dark like molasses. There is no soft left in these fists. A sleepwalking solstice. Sympathising in pillow talk, the romantics of twilight magenta, swapping bodies with cantaloupe flesh. Mouths moving in unison like mirrors until the call to Allah wakes you at dawn. And you realise there are no more holes, but there is a space left behind by your father. So it's only right to film it next to nature. Next up is Frahima. My body is a map, part of the treasure hunt on the way to manhood. The map shows a temple. The map shows a maze. This part is optional, though extra points for getting lost, then found in my body is the lost and found. My body is in the lost and found, left in the back seat of a taxi. The driver put it in a box. My body is a box, shaped like a confessional. Men whisper dirty things. They shed their sin and leave behind dead skin. My body is a bin. Thin and easy to dent, full of use-by dates. My body is a date, in a calendar, in a diary. My body is a diary. It does not judge and has felt many ball strokes. My body is a joke, a fun pun. Fully cocked and loaded, my body is a gun and someone 
someday will hold it to their heads. Boom. Dead. Bogdan, don't you think that was absolutely incredible? What an array of beautifully performed poems through the digital world. Yeah, no, that's it. There were some, some really strong, very different pieces. That's one of my favorite things. They're all Love so it. different, but kind of still use the same platform and the same genre and said, yeah, it's, I always find it really exciting to, to see new work like this. And I really hope everybody watching has enjoyed the variety of the performances. Apples and Snakes, next round of poems, incredible, will be here on Friday. Yeah, yeah, you can find it back here, us back here on Friday, and then generally search, uh, you know, Works First on, on your preferred search engine and on all socials, and you'll find more about the project. Uh, check out the work of Apples and Snakes, so it's applesandsnakes.org um, for the website, and then Apples and Snakes across all socials. And if you want to find out what uh, Amir and I uh, are up to, then my Twitter handle is at BeVeryQuiet. And Amira, you are at Voice of the Poets. Voice of the Poets, yeah. Nicely contrasting Twitter handles from us. <laughs> it um, really is. So yeah, that wraps up uh, this showcase. Join us uh, back here on Friday. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.